What's going on, guys? I'm Defani from Blade Gaming here with my friend Grubrot. Say hello, Grubrot. Hey! We're gonna be playing some Fire Emblem Sacred Stones. Sacred Energy Stones. Prologue here. Uh, you've uh, you played a lot of this game, haven't you? You're a big uh, Fire Emblem fan, aren't you? Yeah, I'm not like a master of the game by any means. Like, um, there are some people who play it and they know how to do all this crap, and I have no idea how to do it. Like, you're not gonna see me going flawless and telling you should move here, then this enemy will react this way. I have no idea. I'm just I play the game a lot, um, so I go through it and I usually beat it. <laughs> Yeah, I'm super casual as well. I don't know the closest thing to, like, um, leveling up, you know, the soul strength between people and all that stuff. I just know that Berserkers are awesome and Generals are awesomer. That's about it. <laughs> Continent of Magvel. So, what, what do you think of the story of uh, Sacred Stones? Sacred Stones story? I think it's really really well thought out. Personally, I really like the story. Um, I think some people were complaining about it at one point, saying that it wasn't a very good story. But I did begin playing these games when I had my Game Boy Advanced SP as like a seven-year-old kid. So, um, at the time, storyline wasn't much for, much of a thing to me, and I just rushed through the game. Um, so I actually started actually paying attention to the story in like my fifth playthrough of the game. I was like, maybe I should listen to the story. And it was actually kind of cool when I realized why I was in the desert and why I was fighting undead and all that shit. And it was pretty neat. Um, hit me right in the feels. It's pretty... Right I thought feels. it was a pretty sad story. Uh, that grotto. Yeah, it's... It's better than what it seems. It's no... It's no Last of Us. But it's pretty legit, as far as I care to say. I would have to agree with that. Oh, whoops, I skipped that pretty fast. Oh well. Now, with this, uh, I assume this will be like a bit more of a casual run, not super... Yeah, because if I were to go super, super hardcore, I wouldn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> oh, me neither. Me neither. But then again, Fire Emblem never been uh, too horribly difficult. You can, of course, go incredibly in-depth with everything, but it also facilitates a bit more casual play, which I always thought. You know. Yeah, especially the new one. The new one really aimed towards more casual players that don't oh, really want to have to hardcore go through it and restart every chapter five times to figure out what the best way exactly. to go is. You can, if you do give like goof up and you give a unit too much experience, you can actually go back and grind, which God damn it, I thought right. I got sent. Call me a, a lame casual. But, oh, man. Couldn't this, figure out a good place game. to freaking move my mouse. Renee Castle... Blah, 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 blah. When I, was a, when I was a kid, for whatever reason, I really wanted to control one of those soldiers. I don't know why. Really? But my dream, so like, badass. was that you will unlock a soldier. <laughs> oh, just the generic... Yeah, the generic spear dude on the foot soldier. Yeah, you never actually get any of those, I think. You get the uh, the spear lady later, but that's it. Yeah, she doesn't become a soldier. She's just a different, she's just a different class yeah, altogether. Yeah, exactly. She's, I think she's like the closest you can get, but still. Aw, oh, come on, Grubrod. We're a professional. Now it's just me waiting for the phone to stop ringing. There you go. Um, that my mic was muted, right? Sorry, yes. After that first drink. Okay, yes. good. I'm sorry about that. Obviously, the highest standards here. My bad. 
<laughs> I, I am not a master, as my friend De Profonde here. Anyways, plot! Yay, plot! Plot. The castle is surrounded by the villainous grotto forces. To save the kingdom, the royal twins must be preserved. They flee the invading forces. Yes. That's pretty much that pretty much sums it all up, yeah. <laughs> Except for it's only Erica. Ephraim is off invading people. Like a Oh that's that's right. We chose Erica for this playthrough. Any uh No, it's um you, you choose you choose later. Right now you have to play oh. as Erica. My mistake. Yeah. Okay. Well, well, uh, I guess we'll find out in a bit then. But yeah, here we have um, super OP starting dude. Who I'm going to try to refrain from using. That's that's for the best. It really is for the best. I feel like in in Fire Emblem, at least newer ones, you do have that. Usually a paladin, someone who is already bubbled up. As you can see, already has 30 health, which is incredible, starting off. And then he uh, plays the wharf for this episode, just to show off how badass this Draco Knight is. Which is pretty badass. He, pretty uh, badass. He's kind of not that easy to take down later on. It's kind of yeah. Kind of a pain in the neck. Does not get much easier. Walls of text. 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 Like text. Text. Or something. Text. 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 Yay for Game Boy Advance cutscenes, guys! Woohoo! Oh yeah. Still pictures, man. Look at that. Microphone cord getting stuck Look on your at chair, that man. Period accurate red and blue hair. That's what I love about Fire Emblem. It just doesn't give a fuck. It's just like. Like, hair. oh, it's a, it's a guy? Pink hair. Fuck it. Pink hair, boom! Oh, it's a, it's a girl? This Fucking... is now Party Rock Europe. <laughs> What's next, a mohawk? Polka dot and mohawk? I... I... I would not be surprised at all. Just like, boom! Neon pink mohawk on some dude. Oh my gosh. Come on. All we need to do is cross this bridge. Oh wait, let's stop here. We just walked let's ten steps. We just One walked ten steps. You must be tired. You must be tired after those One ten steps. Away yeah. From Captain Badass Draco Knight over there, who almost who knocked you down to half health in a single. Oh hit. look, bandits! Let's, instead of running away to oh. safety, let's just fucking fight him. Just fuck it. Princess, mm, you got this. Princess, you got this. I'm just gonna be over here bleeding out my eyeballs. <laughs> All right, and. Because if you notice, um, he has red eyes too, actually. Co color coordinating. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna put that. And I'm gonna wait there. And that's gonna be my turn. Funnel them through the hot gates where their numbers come to an end. Exactly! Gustav! Now, uh, will you be explicitly trying to level up the Lord characters as much as possible in this playthrough? Um, probably not. I try to balance them out as as normal characters because then I'll just end up forcing all the experience onto them, and that's never a good <laughs> thing. Is he gonna move? Yes, he is. Okay. I always try to give them a little bit more, just because so that they're that little bit more tanky, thus um, less likely to die. And that, that's a good. You get the these killer upgrades later, but then again, you have that risk that. They're going to die during the course of their up. Exactly. Giving them AXP, so. There's a lot of risk. Oh shit, I put him on a fucking. I didn't know he would move. Usually they don't move. Oh yeah. I forgot! Oopsies. Come on. Erica, you just fucking crit everyone else. Why can't you crit him too? Random number guy. Doesn't care. Yeah, alright, that's good. Ah, alright, well, we're fine. We just won. Now, uh, explain how kind of... I know doubling, 
doubling attacks on characters is a huge part of the meta in Fire Emblem. Uh, do you have anything you could say about that? Uh, I'm not really sure what you just said, actually. I zoned out for a second. Basically, <laughs> um, you know how when, you know, you're in this screen where you're comparing the combat stats, and sometimes a character will have a times two next to their uh, oh, attack. Oh, okay, that's what you mean, okay. That's, that's what I mean by doubling. They'll have two attacks, and uh, that's a huge part of the meta, where if you have enough agility or speed, that you won't get doubled, and you'll double against other people. So it's kind of like late game, even the tankiest of people will take more damage, because they'll get doubled a lot. And even if they take a lot of damage off, they're getting hit by two attacks every time. Exactly. Oh, right. sh what, what? Wag. Oh, yeah. Level two of oh, Okay, but. Oh, uh, storyline, storyline, storyline. What? Oh no, I got hurt. Oh, what? I'm fine. Oh, but you look pale. Shut the fuck up. No, Seth, I'm I only fine. Got, I only got stabbed in the cloth womanly bits by axes. This is appropriate battlefield attire, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm wearing my yes. nightgown. That'll protect me. <laughs> Literally, nightgown. You pulled me out of bed, you stupid fuck. What'd you expect? That's the prologue. Chapter 1. Two yes. vulneraries already. Yeah, so pro. Oh boy. Escape. Alright, fuck this storyline shit. I ain't about that anymore. <laughs> Oh, quality LP. Who gives a good goddamn? Check with this guy can move. Alright, we're good. I think this is the chapter that introduced houses. Yeah, game. in the tutorial they would introduce houses here. Gotcha. Will you be making a big effort to save the villages and uh, uh yeah, usually I, I try to. Because usually I right like up. to I like to uh, do as good as possible, I guess, and and the fucking exactly. Villages. You want those awesome bonus characters and those nice, oh, especially the bonus characters. Print. Oh, definitely, they're usually really legit. The harder the character is to get, the more useful it is. Which reminds me, I think it's either chapter four or five when you get Joshua. Ugh. Oh yeah, it's worth it. Oh my god, I hate doing that so much. I've restarted that, I that's that that's chapter at least five having... times before. It's the thing with having characters just so incredible. You just murder the fuck out of potential characters. Cause either freaking this this guy you're looking at right here in the green armor and the black hair, Gilliam, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Gilliam yeah. or something. Um He he uh He'll he'll go I'll put him up there to defend him and either he'll kill Joshua or Joshua will crit or someone else or something like that. It's just it's like Oh. Yeah, that's... It's like, everyone gets like... <laughs> this guy can't one-shot anyone except Joshua. Joshua's the exception yeah, of people he cannot one-shot. Yeah. I always thought the knights were fucking weird. It's got that weird breastplate shield thing. Yeah, I never really understood how he moved in that. Yeah, it's pretty weird. But, uh, yeah. Uh, next time I attack, I'll explain the, uh... Game. I'll explain that screen, because people probably don't understand if they've never seen this game before. It's true. Uh, will you be explaining the weapon triangle as well? Yeah, I probably should. Thanks for reminding me. Um, okay, so... Click attack, and I have two uh, weapons I can use that he has in his inventory here that I can use. I'm going to choose the Iron Lance. And as you see in the screen, the blue, where it says Franz, his HP is 20. His The damage that he's going to do to him is 14 times 2, which means the times 2 meaning he will attack 2 times. The hit that you see underneath that means it's hit his hit chance is at 90, so he has a 90% chance to hit. Underneath that is his crit percent, and that's at 1. So he has 1% chance to crit the uh, that soldier. That is a goddamn lie, that hit chance. You, you think that's reliable? Nope. Honestly, I have to agree random, with that. The random number god has, has things in store for you. I know. Fucking 20% chance to hit my lord at 1 HP this one time and fucking killed him. But anyway, on the opposite side, that's the HP, the uh, damage, and the hit chance, and the crit chance that the soldier has that's in the red. And um, you see where our weapons are. The lance picture next to the name Franz and the lance picture next to the name Soldier. That's the weapons that we're using. There are uh, a whole bunch of different weapon triangles that go on in the game. One of these triangles, which is a good example of the most basic one, 
is the lance, axe, and sword triangle. Axes will best lances, lances will best swords, and swords will best axes. So, if I were to go back and use my sword, you can see that there's a little black down arrow next to my sword, and a green up arrow next to his lance. And you're probably wondering, wait, why are you doing more damage with the sword than you are- Oh no, I am doing more damage with the spear, never mind. Yeah, you're actually doing more. Okay. Well, if my sword was doing more damage than my spear, that would be because my sword had a higher weapon level. But I think it's just that it's at a disadvantage now that it's lower. I'm not sure what the weapon is. You also notice that you have a higher hit. Oh yeah, because of, because of the weapon advantage, you'll you'll do uh, if you have a weapon disadvantage, you'll do less damage. You'll have a lower chance to hit, things like that. And um, I think you might have a lower chance to crit. Mm, probably. Probably just a lower chance at everything. It's quite the criticals, unless you're using a rapier, and specifically a critical weapon, such as a deadly weapon, which we'll see later. Criticals will not happen much in the early game. That's really something that goes that becomes much more involved later. <laughs> Fucking paladin right next to those guys. Whoops, forgot about that. Sup? Oh yeah, and if you're standing on, <clears throat> sorry. Right now she's standing on a fort. You can see that in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. It says fort, uh, defense 2, avoid 20. That's the extra stats that I get while I'm in there. So enemies are going to be doing 2 less damage to me, and I have a 20% higher chance to avoid their attacks. That basically means their hit chance is 20% lower. And every turn, at the beginning of my turn, uh, every unit on a fort will regain a small amount of their health. Very useful for a defensive map, or just any really long-winded session. And I'm trying to use this character right here that I'm fighting with right now. His name is Seth. I'm trying to use him as little as possible. Right now, I don't really care about these three enemies. Uh, but I'm going to use him as little as possible because he's basically sucking some experience off of my other characters. Because um, he's really good early game, but later on in the game, he does drop off. So it exactly. is it is a little he... bit uh, more difficult. Because uh, he, he's basically taking experience away from the people who you're going to be able to use. Uh, or we're going to scale with the map. Seth falls off in scaling later on, so there's no point in using him because he's just going to be a waste of character later on. He's not as strong as the others. He is explicitly a fallback character who is, you know, super strong at first, but if you use him explicitly and only him, you're Shoot, doing I forgot about that soldier. Yes. Part of the strategy. Oh, well, there we go, crit. Is, oh, hot damn, it's crit. Um, 2% chance. The last. When a character attacks and they, you know, they go gray, they don't have a turn anymore, they'll keep that weapon. Um, so you have to keep that in mind when, you know, when a uh, unit attacks them, they'll still be using that weapon and they may be at a disadvantage in that trade. You basically just look at the combat screen that pops up before you attack someone, because that'll let you know uh, everything that you need to know about the fight that you're about to get into. You can use that to decide whether or not you're going to die or if you're going to live. There is a more mm -hmm. advanced screen, but basically it just means you have to do a little bit of math on your own. Oh, thank God. Yeah. That was careless of oh, me. Oh my, yeah. That was careless that of me. That is an example of the anus clenching this game is just all about. Your character can go, can go from full health to no health with just two enemies. You have to be very careful, make sure that uh, he has backup or that only one enemy can get to him at a time, that kind of stuff. Otherwise, you're exactly. gonna get you're gonna get your characters this low, and then they're gonna have to retreat, and then you're gonna be wasting these volunaries that you have uh, to get them back up to fighting power. Although I probably should not have used that. Well, um, a especially stressful part of the Fire Emblem games. Most people probably know when your character dies in combat, they practically die for real. Some I believe for real. die for real. Uh, while others are just uh, plot important ones that come up in cutscenes that aren't the Lord, they'll just be uh, wounded grievously and thus can't participate in combat but are still part of the plot. So right now, you see my rapier has the down arrow on it in the, um, in the combat screen, yet it is flashing. That means that, um, I'm not sure, it's just like, not, not empowered would be the, the word to use, it's just, it's, it's good be. against that kind of unit. It's also, rapiers are also good against um, cavalry. It's good against the knight. Um, I guess the logic behind oh, it is that it's stabbing, and you can stab between the cracks of his armor. I guess. I mean, sure. But yeah. But uh, it basically just means that even though I'm at a, I'm at the weapon disadvantage, 
I am still going to be quite powerful against him. I'm going to have a, a better chance of winning. And as you can see, uh, by the screen, I have a low chance to hit, but if I hit both times, he will be dead. And a way that I can know for sure that, because in the second turn, if I don't kill him, he would kill me. So a way to make sure that you're going to be able to save your characters, I'm going to go to Gilliam, and I can click this Rescue. And I can go to Erica, and that means I can rescue her and get her out of harm's way. And Gillen will basically just be tanking damage for her for a little bit. We'll just sling her over his back. And carry her off into safety. Mm hmm Gilliam, the true carry of this game. But we don't have to worry about that, because we've slain the faggot. With the weird mustache coming out of his nose. Morgret! And, um, boss monsters typically grant you the maximum amount of experience, which is 100. Uh, uh, but sometimes, sometimes you will get a little bit less than that, depending on the character. And I forget, are level ups, are they randomized, or are they scripted for when, um, I mean, the attribute bonuses you get when you level up, are they randomized, or...? Uh, I, have, I wouldn't be able to tell you, I have no idea about that. I'm pretty sure they're scripted. I'm, I'm, I would I'm be willing to bet my money that they're scripted. I want to say no, because you just only got plus one luck with that level and nothing else. And it does seem just like inconsistent with those previous two level ups where you got uh, um, ups in at least five stats. Just as I am. That the random I... number god is a dick in this game. Either way. Yeah. Alright, so just since I'm skipping all the storyline, I will be uh, explaining what just happened. Basically, we ran away from our home, which is somewhere in this general area over here. Um, this is this is, this is is where we just were. And then we came all the way over here into Castle Fralia, which is another another area, another um, con like, I guess, basically I a... I believe an uh, ally. Yeah, an ally. Another country on this, on this continent. Um, and they are they are our ally. They, the uh, we know them very well, basically, um, in as our characters do. And so we went there, and they gave us the princess. Her name I think is Tana. She she gave us some of her. She she came with us basically. So now we have a Pegasus Knight is her class to um to join our party and a cleric. They gave us a cleric as well, and they gave us five thousand gold of provisions. So that's the two right there that you saw. There's a. Uh, um, they, oh wait, no, it wasn't Tana that they gave us. That's that's later on in the it game. It was. That it's true. Vanessa. The green-haired lady is Vanessa, and the dude with the weird Mulder. mustache is Mulder. Yes. Here so to you solve can see some there's violence. Mulder, and there's Vanessa. And Vanessa's part right now is to run over here and rescue Ross, and then get back over here. Rescue the two best characters in the game. Pretty much. And we're just gonna skip this visit. It doesn't mean anything. You can skip it and you won't miss anything in the storyline, so it's not I'm very surprised deal. Vanessa, with her light frame, can carry Ross with the burden of his gigantic sack. No comment. <laughs> not sure if you meant that to be sexual or not, but I took it that way. Boop. Boop. Every once in a while I will be hitting my space wall, which does speed the game up a little bit just to get through stupid stuff like this that no one cares about. Oh, you fucked up, Garcia. You ain't, you ain't nothing. And obviously, more. you did take Ross first because no horse can bear the weight of Garcia. Don Flamenco. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that. I, I just went with the fact that you know, Ross probably would be able to handle another hit with his five HP. This is very true. <laughs> Ross starts out. Ross is unique. He's one of the two units in the game who actually start as a unique class called Journeymen, who are actually, they start out relatively weaker than any other normal class. But they have the benefit of leveling up, I believe, more quickly as Journeymen. And they start out, they, uh, they scale much better than most other characters. Yes, basically because he is starting out lower, you will be able to train him up higher, meaning that, um, well, not not higher. Just you'll be able to train him more. He'll go through. He'll level up more times than everyone else. <laughs> Excuse me. And once he reaches level ten, journeyman, he automatically gets a class up to either a fighter, which is what Garcia is, or a pirate. And 
Um, and that's basically the class that everyone else is at right now. Like, uh, Garcia's at, at rank 1. We'll say rank 1. And so is my, uh, my little cavalier over there, my knight, and my lord. They're all at rank 1, and so, so is the Pegasus Knight. And then they can rank up to rank 2. The journeyman, you can think of that as being rank half or rank zero or something because they are weaker. You'll, you're, there are three characters like this in the game that you can cap, that you can uh, recruit to your team, and they will become a lot stronger later on in the game if you take the time to train them up, because it is a very a, a very big challenge to train them up. And right now, I'm just using, I'm just using my cleric to heal up Ross uh, from his five HP so that he has a little bit more survivability because he does have only 15 HP and he is very easy to hit. He has a lot lower stats than everything else right now, so he is going to get a huge disadvantage. Basically, we're not going to use him until we unlock a, a good place to grind. If you know what this game is, then if you've played this game before, you know what I'm talking about, the Tower of Volney. Uh, and then I'm just going to, to power level him up over there because it'd be too risky to do it here, and I don't want to have to restart my game a, a hundred times just to keep that guy alive and getting experience. Yeah, we'll be seeing the Tower of Volney later. It's, it's a unique part. I believe, I think this is the first game in the Fire Emblem series that actually has replayable areas such as the Tower of Volney. Yes. And it's incredibly nice and just stress reducing, as I said before. Just, you no longer have to ration out experience throughout your units as with previous Fire Emblem games where you have a strict experience um, cool. cap, I want to say. You're only going to get so much if you go through all the optional missions and the storyline. For the love of God, Garcia, just kill him with your freaking axe. What are you doing? Oh, but it's in the forest. <laughs> so are you. God damn it. <laughs> well, he is having to throw an axe through an entire castle. I, that I'm is true. He was standing right I mean, here. He's over. He's throwing it through the castle. Oh, Garcia. I assume that takes a lot of coordination. I would. Uh, yeah. He might have to like. Bend it around bends, and or just or just throw it up in that the air. That is some wanted shit right there. Definitely. I think the wanted would have been a much better movie slash comic book if it took place in medieval fantasy. Era. In, instead of Ooh, curving uh, bullets, you're just curving axes, throwing axes. Axes, yes. Although. Random crit. Random crit. One thing I do really like about the series: the crit animations and animation general in general. Very nice. Very yeah, cool to look at. Yeah, I do. At. I do like even even in the the uh, original Fire Emblem. Well, at least fi it, okay. Technically, it's Fire Emblem Seven, but it was the first Fire Emblem to be released in the U.S. But I do, I do, I do really enjoy that Fire Emblem. Okay, Especially yeah, the sort of the Swordmaster Myrmidon Sword Saints later. Oh Very my God, cool. those guys. Are Especially badass. since they will do it a lot. Throw a deadly weapon on them. You have all their passive really incredibly high crit bonuses they'll be critting all over the place it'll just be unfair because people will just be walking up dead 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 via counter attacks that obviously though will be much later in the game yes but later on I am I do have since I've played this game so many times I do know who gets really really good and who gets kind of just meh um so I am going to be picking my units as I go and, and, and giving experience to certain people, basically just favoring them. Mm -hmm. uh, um, as you can are see, you aiming for a certain kind of um, certain kind of fighting group? Like, are you kind of going with a highly mobile force, or are you going more like a lot of slow-moving, really defensible? really hard-hitting force? I tend to try to keep it balanced, um, because when I go into a, a uh, battle later on, when I have too many units to go on at once, because you are limited to how many units you have in the field, um, I do tend to try to keep my units... Oh, well, I don't know what there. Uh, to, keep, to keep it flexible so that I have some units for everything. I, I, as a player, I usually him. favor a slower, bit more defensible ones that kind of tolerate mistakes more because a passive that a lot of the mounted, all the flying mounted units have is that archers will ruin their day utterly. They take, I believe, every arrow fired at them is an instant critical. Is that correct? Um, which ones? What? Um, against Pegasus. Oh yeah, knights, against against believe, Pegasus knights like Vanessa. I believe dragon knights. 
I think to a lesser extent, but I think it's still there. There's, it's not that it's not a it's not an instant crit. It's just um, it gets the weapon advantage that you saw when we were fighting against um, uh, the knight in the last chapter, the boss, the boss, mm -hmm. the boss knight. It's that same exact kind of okay. It's, it's the same as that kind of thing. They just they just get an advantage. Um, but it is well, it is extremely deadly. Your damage your damage boosts up to the point where you basically get one shot every time if you exactly. don't consider yourself like the luckiest. That kind of coupled the with the Pegasus Knight's naturally low health scaling, I believe, you have to be incredibly careful. That's that's but... only that's only with the uh, the first the first rank Pegasus Knights. The uh, the second rank ones when you level them up to uh, to the next rank, that's when they get that's when they get a little bit stronger, a little bit more HP. I do want to try to okay. save this village because I almost never get to. I have heard that Pegasus Knights scale incredibly well with class upgrades. Is that true? Oh, hold on. Shit just got real. Oh. Hold up. It's coming back. I promise. No, it's time to get popcorn. Go for a potty break. <laughs> yeah. Bip bop, bip bop. -bop. Um, I think we're back. I'll, I'll keep this safe state in case we're not back. Sounds good. Alright. Um, I just wanted to save state it in case I died here so I didn't have to go all the way back. Uh, because I do want to try to save that village, and it is a very risky business. But uh, worst comes worst, I have a paladin. This is true. Although you don't want to give him too much, the paladin is extremely useful for some things earlier on, of course. Like this situation I'm in right now. Um, it is very possible for Erica to die here, so I might want to take my paladin in and try to kill this archer right there, or just grab her. Uh, not gonna happen now. <laughs> no, that's even true. Push. If yeah, I'm just gonna do the that. Paladin knights, while they have incredible maneuverability, as you as you see, they they can they aren't slowed down by mountains or any terrain, I believe, and they have incredible movement. They don't hit that hard. They don't hit hard at all, and they are oh, that's quite squishy. Bitch. Oh well, you're dead. So. Boss monsters will always give you dialogue in the beginning. Some of them don't give you any mm -hmm. dialogue, but you still get the little speech bubble with their head animated. Yeah. Oh wow, already level six. Jeez. Yeah. Fucking bandits, yo. All right, the good thing about right now is that uh, that bandit did not go and attack Seth, so she will be getting her EXP. Very good. I was kind of worried. I believe the Lord there. units, at the very least, do have a very nice scaling. So if if your Lord units do, do get are higher level than a lot of others, um, it's not the end of the world. It's not like oh, I still didn't get the village because I killed everything. God damn uh, it! Oh well, well. Um, probably. Do a, you know, edit that in later, probably. Yeah, whatever. All right, now to go to Borgo. 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 Oh, can't remember what Never mind that says. shit. It's Borgo. Um, oh, this place. Okay. So now, now we get in two and two new units introduced. One of them is Nemi. She's an archer. She can attack uh, anything that is. So you, you can see that she has these two red squares from where she stands. She has that range on her uh, to attack those two extra squares. And after this, we're going to be getting another special character because of here. So I'm going to move her up there just to go get that character. Uh, once again, Ross is going to have to stay behind. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to be sending my units that I want to level up in to the front lines. However, you do have to note with archers, they can only fire indirectly, which is to say any block that is directly adjacent, they cannot attack. And thus, if they are attacked by a melee unit, they can do nothing but sit there and take it. They get no counterattack. Yeah, it kind of sucks. You have to be very careful with them as well, because they are fragile. They are one of those more fragile people. Definitely. Of course, uh, leveling them into a sniper later, I believe, helps with that a little. Yeah, it does. Uh, what I just did there believe... is I sent uh, something to my supplies, 
uh, from from Erica. One thing they added in this game was was you got a supply uh, caravan that wasn't part of your party in the previous games. The supply caravan has always been a part of your party. And I'm not gonna even break that door down. I need to. Yeah, another very nice stress reduction is the hog. Oh, you man, get an item, he doesn't just poof go away. If you already have too much room. All right, so now um, something we didn't explain last time uh, in the last chapter was what green units are. There, are, there are three different teams. Uh, one of them is your team, the blue people. The other one's the enemy team, the red guys. And the other one is the um, the green team, which is the, the others. They're on your side, but they are not controlled by you. So what that means is sometimes you can talk to them. Most of the time you can talk to them, get them to be on your side. Other units you can't recruit at all, and they're just there as units that you can't control. Uh, sometimes you have to save them. Sometimes you're required to save them. Uh, other times if you save them, uh, you get a bonus reward, but if you don't save them, you don't lose. And this is one of the one of the examples of units that we can indeed talk to. Whatever. So these two people have a relationship with each other. That's all cool and stuff. Whatever. Uh, Colm, this character right here that I'm using to attack this bandit, he is what's called a thief. He can he can uh, use lock picks to lock pick chests and doors uh, without needing a key for them. So he's very useful. Uh, they're not typically good fighters, but when you class them up to rank 2, they become amazing fighters. I believe um, when they become assassins, they can one-shot many mm, incredibly easily. Yeah, it's kind of it gets kind of a little bit ridiculous. Like, <laughs> oh, it's so ridiculous. As one would hope from a class called assassin. They, think, they can take a lot of hits, too. Like, they're pretty durable for being so powerful. But I do they believe... I mean, uh, I believe they lose the ability to lockpick things. Is that is that true? Uh, as... No. As, um... Assassins, they can still use lockpicks. But if you, ah. if you class them up into the other class, because in this game, everyone gets two different classes that you can class them up into. In this game... Let's see mm -hmm. shot. In this game, um... You can either go. They made a new class. You can either go assassin or you can go rogue. And rogues don't need pickpock. Don't need. Uh, uh, don't need lock okay. picks. They can pick. They can pick locks with their, with their knives, quote unquote. Yeah, they actually don't even need a knife. But a knife. But yeah. Very cool. Usually, usually I go assassin though, just because. Just because. It becomes less of an issue later. Yeah, you don't really... Usually when, when the game supplies you with chests, they give you keys for the chests. Sometimes you'll have to pick and choose, though, so I save my lock picks for when I don't have keys. As long as you have a someone who can use those lock picks, or you're pretty certain you can get the keys for those chests, it becomes less of an issue. Yes, and you also uh, can start saving up a... Uh... Oh man, I wanted to give her some experience this game, she's going to be way too far away. One of these chests is worth it. I just can't remember which one it is. I'm just gonna have to open them all. Oh, uh, now something to keep in mind before I attack is there's another there's another thief right here. So if I don't if I'm not careful and don't take these chests in time, he would come up here, open this door, and open these chests. There's a scripted time when he's scheduled to come in. Later on in the game, they'll come in earlier and earlier. So you're gonna want to be careful of that. You gotta race, race those douchebags. Sometimes thieves. it is a good idea. Most of the time, it's a good idea to take your time in these in these levels. Let the enemies come to you instead of you coming to the enemies, especially in survival chapters. Um, but in this chapter, definitely. in this chapter, it's definitely not that big of a deal. With practice, you get good at baiting and just kind of getting enemies to come to you. You're trying to manage aggro that way because it's much more predictable. You know, thrusting. A, a general or a tankier unit out, and then counterattacking with a squishier unit unit that you want to level up. Yeah, and what I just did there was I was gonna move my my uh, my Vanessa, my Pegasus Knight, up to attack this wall with her javelin, but then I realized there was an archer here, so I checked. He has a red square there, meaning he can attack in that area. He can also attack in any of the blue squares. It's just the areas he can move as long as he has two spaces away. He can attack you, um, and he's red right there, which means my uh, my Pegasus Knight would have been able to get attacked. So instead, I'm going to move her right here where she wouldn't get attacked and attack the wall that way. 
So now hopefully an enemy Wise. will come up here and attack the wall so I don't have to waste a turn on that. And I can go in and pull some noobs. Good, yeah. Positioning is key in this game. All the time. Knowing where your enemy can move and attack, and knowing who is vulnerable, who is low, and how can you back up a unit if they are attacked is essential. You never want to leave a unit on their own unless you're positive that they're not going to get hurt. It also helps not to get cocky, like me just going, like, yeah. I am a general, just... Just go solo this entire encounter. Oh, oh, those lots of tiny arrows hurt after a while. <laughs> that one Whoa. damage is starting to add up when it happens 45 times. But uh, exactly. real quick, as you can see, there are little dashes where the damage and hit and crit would be. Uh, you can still see their HP. That's because he can't attack me, so there's no damage, meaning there's no hit chance, meaning there's no crit. Exactly. So that's Get why that's like that. Fucked, Iron Bowman. Iron Bowman. Sword to the throat. Motherfucker. Motherfucker. He dead. Revel up. <laughs> Revel up. Revel up. Oh, man. Good thing to note is that uh, since thieves are low damage sword users and um, knights are high armor uh, spear users, they're very strong against these, these thieves. Thieves usually can't do a thing to the... Uh, also note, Gilliam is such a badass. You notice he had the rescue option that he, he could have easily rescued uh, Franz there. Who's on a horse. Which, who's on a horse. He could pick up the so horse Gilliam and throw the horse over his back. Just, ah, huh. oh, come You're here. You're coming with me, boy. You're in Gilliam town now. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like taking damage, I don't need to. Yeah, Erica's kind of overpowered right now, because I leveled her up to like level 7, I think it is what yeah. she's at. Not a bad thing. No, not a bad thing at all. So good thing to have your lord a little bit above, but I don't know. Now I'm going to have to not use her anymore, and that makes me sad, because she's a sword user, and she's cool as balls. Oh, that's another mm -hmm. thing thieves can do. Uh, they can steal stuff. Oh, dick ass thief! But something you can keep in mind. Wait, what's the button? No. Um. Oh no. Oh, it's there's it. the button I'm looking for. Okay. You can. You can look at this thing. Oh man. Never mind. Usually the item that they just stole is green, and uh, whenever an item is green, I think this guy has a, has a green thing. No, he doesn't. What's this guy? I thought someone did. Why does he have an antitoxin? That's what? a good question. What? You don't have any poison capacity yet. There's there's a zero there's percent no chance of us having poison right now, and that's not even green, so it's not like it's, it's gonna. Ah, okay. Regardless, I digress. Maybe he just he wants to be safe. I mean, you never know? Question mark. Is he steps on a nail? <laughs> and then he gets and he gets. Rust poison stuff. I don't know. Fuck. <laughs> That's really weird, though. I never noticed that. Either. I watch this. Trade. Javelin. Attack. Javelin. Huzzah! Boom! <laughs> Gilliam up in this bitch. What bothers me is how they portray every single knight as being fat. Except for Amelia, but you have it to level Amelia up. Big bone! You got all that armor! So, something's gotta know, fill all that you space. Could be, you could be an Abercrombie and Fitch model under that. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess so. That is a good point. I always just thought of him as the big know? fat guy that takes all the attacks. Or you know, maybe he's just. He goes bear mode when he goes to the gym. He doesn't, uh. do cardio too much. It's all about the muscle. He does squats. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Do you want to be careful unless you're going to uh, explicitly level up? 
uh, Nami and Ross and the Tower of Volney, because it does kind of seem like it's the um, Erica party hour in here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to start training these guys too now. That's why I'm not gonna let her kill the boss. I'm gonna let uh, someone else kill it, like Franz. I think I'm gonna yeah, have Franz, kill the boss. Nami, double team, probably a good idea. I'm gonna let Vanessa take the sword guy on, see if she can handle anything. Also, I like the idea that a Pegasus Knight can rescue a regular knight. So it's a horse with a dude carrying another horse, which is carrying another dude. <laughs> yeah. Pretty awesome. Just like a horse is standing on a horse, because, you know, fuck it. Double horse power! <laughs> Charging into battle at the speed of light. It's horse on horse. No, no, no. Horse on horse, man. Double backflip. Hit the horse with the sword. I do really oh, dig that wasn't worth the it. mercenaries um, attack animations, which is even hilarious because they do that, and then they just go dunk against the general. Haha! Uh, I have slightly wounded you. Miss you didn't see that uh -huh. coming. There are a lot of things you need to keep in mind about uh, what units to train. Big thing to train is your archers, even though I've been extremely neglecting, ne neglectful to All my that archer. training in that one dude she shot. Yeah. What? I think that's the first, only person she's attacked this game, this session. Yeah, 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 it is. I, because I, I took her up to, uh, to get Ross, and then I completely forgot that now she's out of combat range, and I could have just sent Erica up there. Do you have a hand axe? You do, shit. That ruins everything, you bastard. Although I don't believe he has it currently equipped. Yeah, he, he has a steel axe. Yeah, he has a steel axe equipped right now, but so. if I don't, uh, I, my archer would either have to kill him or uh, she would get it knows. back afterwards. What a schnoz. Oh, schnoz. It's gigantic. Well, that's perfect because now Franz will attack him two more times and then he'll only have one HP left. Exactly. It's a oh, uh, hard juggling you have to do. Now he has three HP. Can you take him down? No. Mother of... <sighs> Useless son of a... Yup. It'd be kinda no, hard no, you can't. to power level some units when they just don't do diddly. Cross your fingers, he hits. Oh, yeah, he hits. <laughs> oh, and a crit! 2% chance. Necessary. He's just like, I'm gonna show off now. Off with your head! He's like, bitch, I ain't That's fucking around. Fun. Oh, uh, yeah, Burn free balls. level. Sounds like, sounds like one of my D&D characters. What? I'm Bazbar. <laughs> I've got two minutes of screen time. Not even. Uh, and now you see, we killed, we killed all the units, and the game's not over. That's because you can see, right now it's in the bottom right, and uh, now it's in the top right. It says Seize Throne. That's my objective. So it doesn't matter if there's any enemies left. I just, I just have to get Erica to come over here and sit on the throne. Which makes for a lot of fun when you have to spend like four turns walking your slow ass lord up to the throne. Oh yeah, I know. Especially if you don't, if you end up not using them that much and they lose experience. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Always fun. <sighs> All right. Um, that's gonna be it for this session. In the next session, we're going to be going to this little woods area where we're going to get to unlock some new character classes. We're going to get some magic up into his house. Uh, oh, so that'll yeah. be fine. Wizards and shit! Fuck yeah! Uh, this has been <laughs> this, this has been the Fondaying Grubrot, or Bro Fondaying Grubro, signing out here for Fire Emblem. We'll see you next time for some uh, more, yeah. more crazy shit. It'll be more fun, a little bit more fun next time because we'll be done explaining everything for you. Hi, signing out. Peace.